We're here in the brand new Jurassic Garden as part of the Natural History Museum's new unveiling. We've come to talk to Dr. Paul Kenrick to find out how you make something like this from the fossil record. Good morning, Paul. It's lovely to have you with us in the brand new Jurassic Garden. And I understand that you're the principal researcher here. Can you tell me more about what that involves? So that involves doing re scientific research on my interest is in the history of plants and the history of plant life. So my function, primary function here is, in, is a research scientist, but I'm also involved in exhibits. And I was lead, lead scientist on the development of this evolution garden. Amazing. And when it comes to the evolution garden, how difficult is it to create something like this? It's quite challenging, actually, more challenging than you, you may think. We're standing here in the older part of the garden. So this is from the Carboniferous period when our main, major coal seams were laid down in this country, so 300 million years ago. And most of the plants from that period are actually extinct. Yes. So you can't actually use plants like that now. But what you can do is you can pick modern ones that have similar sorts of growth forms. And, right. um, and one of the, the, the plants you see in the background here are tree ferns. So this is a tree fern that comes from Australia. And the growth form of that tree is very, very similar so the, early, the trees that we see in the earliest forest ecosystems know. So that's forming the, the principal part of our, of, our, of our forest. And we've got a, a whole bunch of other plants underneath, smaller fern-like plants and horsetails. Now in this period of time, there were no flowers at all. So that's another challenge. Oh, right? wow. So we're, we're, in a, we're in an environment or an ecosystem that is green. It's basically green without the, the, the colour that we see in flowering plants today. Those appear much, much later on in our garden story. And how much do we know about what would have been growing? And how easy is that to recreate? How well do these sort of plants fossilise? They fossilise very well indeed. In fact, we know a large amount about the floras of the Carboniferous period because we've done so much mining and quarrying to, 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 to get coal, to extract coal over centuries. And, and so, so the rocks have been very well examined and we know a lot about the plants that, that inhabited that ecosystem. So behind us is a big tall pillar of sandstone rock up there and that's actually a fossil tree trunk oh, that wow. comes from Scotland. So that comes from a quarry in Edinburgh. It's now a, it's <laughs> now a Sainsbury's shopping centre, I think. Yeah. But originally it was a, a sandstone quarry of, that, of the same age, Carboniferous period, that was quarried for building stone. Most of the buildings in Edinburgh were made out of stone from that quarry. Yeah. And what would the environment have been like in a broader sense in terms of temperature, oh, humidity? Yeah. It's very, very different back in, in the Carboniferous period. We're looking at um, an environment where we were much more equatorial than we are today. So the, the, the continents have moved around Yeah. and it would have been a very humid and warm, uh, moist environment. So we're looking at uh, a sort of almost a sort of tropical rainforest type environment. Okay. And you mentioned that there were no flowering plants. Is there anything else that we were lacking in that period that we now see today? So flowering plants is the main thing. I think that, that, that would be the, the main missing element, the yeah. thing that would have struck you immediately is very different. But also there are, there are very, very bizarre looking trees that we don't see now. So there's some of these very tall trees called Lepidodendron, which look rather like telegraph poles with sort of hair on them. They're, they're, they're a very, very strange form of tree. So here we took a, if you really want to do this another way, you can take a, an approach that mixes modeling with living plants. Yeah. So, so, so that's been done in uh, as well, but we decided that we just wanted to stick with, with living plants here rather than introducing models to, 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 to show some of those more um, different extinct tree growth forms. Absolutely. tell us more about any of your favorites within the garden? Any of my favorite plants? Yeah. Uh, so we're in here we stood in front of pieces of fossil wood. So we're in, in the Jurassic Garden where our, our new dinosaur fern is, is, is living. And what we've got here are some, some of the sort of plants and rocks that you would find um, in the environments that these dinosaurs, these dinosaurs lived in. This is fossil wood that comes from uh, Wiltshire. And that big old piece over there comes from Dorset. So these, these are pieces of wood that are at 145 million years old and they've been turned to stone, literally turned to stone, so they're petrified. And here you can see 
the outer surface of the trunk of the plant of the trunk there and if you look there this cross section you can even see the sort of growth rings that you would find oh, yes. in the wood so it looks like a like a, a, a tree trunk that you may be cutting cut Slice in half through. to reveal the, the the structure of the wood but we thought it'd be really nice to have some of that in the garden alongside the dinosaur that people could actually touch and, and feel and see, and see what it actually to. Absolutely incredible that it's been going for 145 million years and now it's there for still, everyone. It's still there for people to look at, yeah. To enjoy. <clears throat> so one of my favourite plants here in the garden is, is the cycad. So this is a plant called Cycas revoluta. It's a small version of the, of the plant. Originally it comes from Japan, but it's very reminiscent of the sort of the shrubby floor, flora that, you, that the dinosaurs would, would have encountered. When they get a bit bigger, they produce a cone, a long cone with pollen in it or, or a cone with, um, with large, large fruits and seeds. So one of my favorite plants, these are actually quite toxic. Oh. Only if you eat them, not if you, <laughs> not, not if you touch them. So, and one theory has been that the toxicity is related is a, is a um, an adaptation strategy. to yeah survival strategy to um, avoid avoid predation. Being eaten. And here's another one. This is another of my favourites. This one is the the Woolamy, the famous Woolamy pine, discovered back in the 1990s. It's a new, completely new group of, of trees that was discovered in Australia, in a canyon, in the Woolamy National Park. Oh, and they thought it was extinct. Yeah. So, so there's only actually one um, clone of this plant left in this canyon when it was discovered. But it's been, cuttings have been taken off the plant and now it's quite widely found. Um, and you can buy it in, in garden centers and things. But this is very reminiscent of the sort of conifer type of foliage that you find in the Jurassic period at the same time as the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. Paul, what can you tell us about this plant so, behind us? So what we've got here is a palm, and palms are a really ancient group of, of plants. They go all the way back to the Cretaceous period, the end of the period of dinosaurs, and they've very, got very distinctive sorts of leaves, so they're very easily seen and identified in the fossil record. This one is quite widely grown in the UK. It's called Trachycarpus, so you often see it in gardens. Uh, yeah. people, people will grow this, this palm. And it produces little branches like that where you've got fruit, the fruits oh, yes. on the on the palm. So this one is past its best, if you like. The fruiting happens earlier on in, in the season. So this is another really iconic plant from the Mesozoic period. It looks a little bit like bamboo and some people kind of often mistake it for bamboo, but in fact, it's a horsetail. It's a plant called Equisetum. Back in the Jurassic period, these, these grew into very large, you had very large tree, tree like growth forms. Is a sort of plant that you want to have in your, in your Jurassic garden or in your, in your Carboniferous garden. They have a fairly specific requirement. So, this, this is something that you, you often actually see on railway embankments. So, they grow, they're growing, they like to grow in ditches where the, where, the, where the water is quite wet. So, we've got them in this sort of little rill here where water drains off the pathway and into this sort of little slope here. So they've got a very wet root system, which is suited for them. Would it have been much wetter back in that time period? Oh, I think it's just they, they, they grow in sort of boggy environments or in environments where you've got poor drainage. You can even see them in some really incongruous places like the Atacama Desert, where, you, where you, you, you've got these dune systems and the plants are growing up through them. And you think, how on earth could they managed to live in that sort of environment and what they've done is they've found little river systems underneath that the ah. rooting systems are actually drainage channels if you like probably meters below the surface that that are totally invisible but the rooting systems are found there and that's how they, they've managed to um, survive in that otherwise very harsh environment absolutely incredible thank you so much for showing us around